All right, y'all, I am about to tell you how the Black Death contributed directly to Columbus discovering America. Yes, I know he didn't really discover America, whatever, you know what I mean. If you're not familiar with the Black Death, it is a pandemic that swept across medieval Europe in the years 1346 to 1353. They didn't know this at the time, of course, but it was the bubonic plague caused by the bacteria Yersinia pestis, carried by fleas, which were in turn carried by rats on merchant ships returning to Europe from Central Asia. It is today extremely rare and very treatable because we have things like modern sanitation and pest control and antibiotics. But back then, it was absolutely devastating. While the Black Death did create a lot of cool imagery for metal bands and the SCP Foundation, it remains the most deadly pandemic in human history, causing the deaths of, depending on the estimate you believe, 75 to 200 million people, profoundly impacting the course of European and world history. Here is just one of those impacts. So the law of supply and demand is quite simple. The more you have of a resource, the cheaper it is. The less you have, the more expensive it is. If a plague takes 100 million some odd peasants out of the available workforce of Europe, what do you think happens to the price of their labor? That's right, it goes up. So starting in the late 1300s, medieval Joe Sixpack suddenly had has a lot more money. Well, friend, he can't spend it on big screen TVs and iPhones, but you know what he would like to do is make his food taste better. His food often sucks. It's always sucked, and he's aware that it sucks. But you know what would make it suck less? Spice. Spice. Chipotle's not an option, and neither is going down to the local Kroger to pick up a little cinnamon or pepper or grain of paradise or spike nard, whatever that is. But this opens up a market demand, and if there's one other immutable law of economics, if somebody wants to buy something, somebody else will try to sell it to them. Huh. Anyway, well, wouldn't you know it, most of the spice they like grows all the way over here. So this opens up a big market for freewheeling entrepreneurs to try to find an easier and quicker way to get over there. It was then as it is today. The most expensive part of delivering a good is often logistics. A lot of these early attempts focused on going down and around Africa, which sucked. That's a very long, very dangerous journey. Not fun. The Suez Canal wouldn't exist for another 400 years or so. Anyway, along came this ding-dong with a really harebrained ding-dong idea. He was gonna get here by going that way. No, nobody thought he was gonna sail off the edge. At least back then. We're stupider now. But he first went to the king of Portugal who said, no, you ding dong, the world is way bigger than you think it is. Get the hell out of my office. Anyhow, then he somehow managed to con the king and queen of Castile out of a sponsorship for his ding dong expedition, trying to go west to get east to get into that big pile of cash in the spice trade, which only existed because peasants could now afford spices because of the Black Death driving up the price of medieval labor. Anyway, we know how that expedition went. He sailed west for Asia, and what do you know, the Americas were in the way. Only for you, you ding dong. So to summarize, because of the Black Death, there were a lot fewer available labor in late medieval Europe, causing the price of their labor to go up, causing them to be able to afford things like spice, causing the spice market to open up in a big way, causing guys like Columbus to try to find a quicker way to Asia. Anyway, that's it for now, y'all. Be good, kiddos. Peace out.